America is out to win a war. Thousands of airplanes line our runways, waiting for you to fly them. Students, tens of thousands of you must be carefully trained. Constant instruction, countless hours of flying time, and not a moment of it can be wasted. There's a tremendous job ahead of you, and time is a vital element. We'll show you what we mean by the story of 100 cadets. Here's two of those cadets, Smith and Jones. They know what's ahead of them before they become skilled pilots. They wouldn't intentionally waste a minute of their practice solo time. What's this? A knucklehead poster. Just like knucklehead, reading a book on a practice solo. But don't worry about Smith and Jones. They're not going to waste their solo hours because they know what it means when training is over and they finally get to the real thing. Cadet Smith is going up to do stalls today. He's been told by his instructor that he needs practice in this maneuver. Let's follow Smith and his good intentions as he takes off and see what he does with his hour. After making a straight climb to 5,000 feet, he practices going in and out of stalls for some time. Having this maneuver pretty well in hand, he decides to try something else. He power dives to the 2,500 foot level. Suddenly, he discovers that there are only 10 minutes left. Smith is very pleased with himself, as you can see. Being 15 miles from the aerodrome, he heads for home, blissfully unaware that he's wasted any of his solo hour. But let's analyze Cadet Smith's maneuvers to see if he has used his hour to the best advantage. He started out with a steady climb to 5,000 feet. This time should have been used to practice chandelles instead of straight climbing. Then too, after he executed the stalls, the descent could have been made by gliding turns instead of a power dive. There will be plenty of power dives for him later on, and gliding turns require practice. Smith's final error was that he ended his practice too far from the aerodrome. He got in a lot of straight and level flying, but that could have been done on regular navigation flights. Now let's go back to Cadet Jones to see what he did with his practice hour. He had been told to practice climbing and gliding turns and lazy eights. So he went straight up to 4,000 feet and practiced his climbing and gliding turns. After about 20 minutes of these maneuvers, he felt that their performance had been smoothed out. He took his airplane up to 5,000 feet where he practiced lazy eights. Then, gliding to the 2,000 foot level and finding his hour almost gone, he contacted the airdrome for landing instructions. He headed for home confident that none of his time had been wasted. In analyzing his maneuvers, we notice that Cadet Jones made a direct climb to 4,000 feet. During that climb, he should have been practicing climbing turns. It's true he wasted no time when he got up there. He practiced the needed climbing and gliding turns, and then went up to 5,000 feet where he followed through with a number of lazy eights. However, he finished by a straight glide down when he should have taken the opportunity to get some more practice in gliding turns. Time was wasted, and time is valuable. Now, how could Cadet Smith and Jones have used their solo practice hours to better advantage? One way is to divide the sky into altitudes, and then associate certain maneuvers with each section. 
up to 800 feet, traffic pattern work and pylon eight. At 1,000 feet, normal banks and turns. From 2,000 to 3,000 feet, steep turns. From 1,000 to 4,000 feet, climbing and gliding turns. From 3,000 to 4,000 feet, chandelles and lazy eights. At 5,000 feet, stalls. And 5,000 or above, acrobatics. Keeping this pattern in mind, let's try a practical demonstration of it. You will spend the first three minutes climbing and leaving the traffic pattern. Then the first practice maneuver, climbing turns of 90 and 180 degrees. At the end of eight minutes, you reach an altitude of 3,000 feet where you level off. You're now in good position for practice of medium and steep turns and coordination exercises. With 10 minutes of this, you've used up 18 minutes of your hour. Then instead of wasting time, get up to 5,000 feet by the use of chandelles. And to avoid being a one-sided pilot, roll in and out of them for about 12 minutes. Having now reached an altitude of 5,000 feet, Roll into the first of your lazy eights. At the end of ten more minutes, you're in an ideal position to begin practicing stalls. After spending twelve minutes practicing stalls, and noting that there are only eight minutes left, you decide to go down. But instead of diving to lose altitude, descend in a series of gliding turns. And with four minutes to go, there is plenty of time to enter the traffic pattern make the 90 degree approach and land. You have not been more than five miles away from the aerodrome. Valuable time has not been wasted in pointless flying. This schedule shows what could be accomplished in an hour. Here's another way for a cadet to get the most out of an hour when he wants to concentrate on two or three maneuvers. After the first five minutes, he spends 20 minutes in chandelles. On reaching 5,000 feet, he spends 15 minutes practicing lazy eights and stalls. Then instead of diving, the descent is made by gliding turns, which fills in the hour. So virtually every minute is spent in useful practice. In the same way, you should plan an hour program of solo landings at auxiliary fields. You spend the first five minutes in taking off and climbing to 800 feet. After five to eight minutes of coordination exercises, you arrive at the auxiliary field and are ready for the first accuracy landing there. Noting the amount of time there is available, make six or seven practice landings at the auxiliary field. Then start back for the aerodrome, practicing coordination exercises on the way. In about ten minutes or so, you land to complete a full hour of practice landings. You should also follow a logical series of maneuvers in practicing acrobatics. Ten minutes after the takeoff, you should have reached an altitude of 5,000 feet by making climbing turns and chandelles. After doing the first maneuver, a loop, you execute a slow roll. Then after gaining more altitude with an Immelman, do a snap roll. The airplane should be slowed up for this 
as it must never be performed at excessive speed. The snap roll is followed by a vertical reversement. After you use another Immelman to gain altitude, do the last maneuver in the series, which is the half roll in reverse. Let's review what you've just accomplished. First the loop, followed by a slow roll, the Immelman, the snap roll, the vertical reversement, another Immelman, and the half roll and reverse. There is time in an hour's practice to go through this procedure twice. Then to come down, lose the first 2,000 feet by the practice of power off stalls. Lose the rest of the altitude by making gliding turns until the traffic pattern is entered and the approach made. Thus, you can go through a logical series of acrobatic maneuvers, completing the routine twice in an hour's time. Every one of you has an unparalleled opportunity to learn the art of flying right now. You won't have the same chance when you reach the advanced stage in your training. None of this valuable time should be wasted. Every solo practice hour should be used to the limit and not one of its 60 minutes lost.